The following is a presentation of the Eagles Sports Network. All right, Mike Clowney, uh, a day before kids arrive on campus, the SAC preseason coaches poll out today. Uh, seventh overall, third in the division. Uh, what's that say to you as you break camp here, uh, here in the next couple days? You know, I think that kind of, to me, when you look at everything from a uh, numbers perspective, it's pretty much where we finished last year, you know, so the anticipation would be we didn't get any better, get, didn't get any worse. Uh, the big thing is I think we'll be able to challenge our kids to see how far, how fast we can move up that chart. Uh, just how motivational is it uh, to be able to use that? Yeah, I think it's, it, it, it is. It, I think it's pretty big because I think we've got a couple kids here right now that's hungry and, you know, they want to see us progress and move up that chart. And so, you know, I think it's just a gauge of, you know, us being able to put it on the board and say, hey, this is where we're at, where do we want to be, and then what are we going to do to get to where we want to be. Uh, lost a fair bit from last year. What are the big steps to take over the the, the next uh, three and a half weeks before the season starts? It's the thing about constant improvement. You know, you look at some of the losses we have, quarterback, you know, losing Braxton, that receiver, you know, so that's a ton of production. But I think with Trey and Zane, both at quarterback competing right now, you know, I think we have viable options there to kind of help us be able to move the football. You know, we're still, you know, pushing guys on the outside on the perimeter receiver, you know, who's going to step up and work to be that guy. You know, leading guy coming back is Kate Meek, so we expect him to take a little bit more of a leadership role and to continue to push us forward at that position. Defensively, your secondary is <clears throat> back entirely. Uh, you miss out on some edge rushers on the line, but by and large, your D-line's intact, but linebackers, some pretty heavy losses. You lose a tw top 20 tackler all time in Alonzo Houston. What steps does that side of the football need to take? You know, I think the biggest thing on that side of football, Coach Brock and Coach Goins, that linebacker, you know, I think we've got some young guys that were here last year that didn't play, you know, now get their opportunity to be able to play. You know, the big thing is, you know, us challenging them, continue to that growth process to where, you know, at the end of the year, we actually want to try to be better than we were. You know, the biggest thing we lose losing there is like a lot of that leadership. But now as that leadership leaves, other guys have opportunities, you know, it's time for them to step up and fill those roles. Uh, let's look at the league as a whole. Uh, four different schools get first place votes. Uh, it, it feels like there is a fair bit of parity uh, among the upper echelons of the league. It, 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 what's your summation of where SAC football is going into 2023? This is a very good football league, and that's where – we had a couple guys in Coach Goss's office there all looking at the schedule. And the consensus they came up with, we can win every game, we can lose every game. <laughs> and so it's like, you know, it's one of those things of like you just kind of make sure that we can kind of see each week for what it is. I mean, I think it is a league to where anybody can win it. That's what we were talking about, the two teams. Like we had, what, two or three playoff teams last year? Yeah. And the two teams that played for the championship, neither one of them made it. <laughs> so it's a good yeah. football league. 